Life from New York. It's your Yu-Gi-Oh! News, news Gio, with your host, Davinator1212. Good evening. This is news Gio, your monthly Yu-Gi-Oh! News. I'm your host, Davinator1212, and these are tonight's top stories. This month was a big month for ban lists, with both the TCG and Duel Links both getting an update to their Forbidden Limited lists, respectively. The community's been in relative shock, seeing as the TCG list made massive sweeping changes to the format moving forward. We also saw both the TCG and Duel Links both get a new main set, as well as the TCG also getting the yearly Battles of Legends set, Heroes Revenge. Tonight's first story has to deal with that TCG ban list and the shock and awe surrounded by it. The massive sweeping changes made to the format seems to be having an adverse effect to the player base as a whole. Before our ban list expert takes a crack at the changes to the TCG, I believe it is our duty here at NewsGeo to shed light on an affliction that is taking the community by storm. And with this story is our own man in the field, Tommy Pelosier. Tommy? Are you really playing Blue Eyes? Do you know how outdated this deck is? Come on, kid, get good. Tell your dad to buy you some cards. He has money. Do you see this stupidness? Yeah, we're live, bro. Holy sh! Thanks, Dave. I'm here at a local card shop where the grip of a new disease is afflicting the players of our community. Scientists are calling the disease Banlithis shoctosis, or Sam's disease, after the illness's first most notable victim. Although, the disease has also afflicted other famous tubers like Simo and Farfa. From what scientists can deduce, Sam's disease creates an unnatural contortion of the facial muscles into an expression that looks like you got whaled in the testicles. This is most likely due to the drastic changes that happened to the July 2019 TCG ban list. Let's see if we can get some comments. Hello, sir. Hey. How are you today? Pretty good, pretty good. Awesome. Uh, I just wanted to get a comment and see how you were feeling because you look like you've been afflicted by Sam's disease, being that your face is a mangled, horrific mess. Would you care to share your experience? What are you talking about? I'm not sick. <laughs> Truly a sad story from one of the most undeserving players of this illness. I wish everybody a speedy recovery from all this. Back to you in the studio, Dave. Thank you, Tommy. We here at NewsGeo send our thoughts and prayers to all of those afflicted with Sam's disease. However, I can report with a happy heart that Paul from Team APS is not sick. Clearly. Moving on to our second story, before we look at the TCG ban list, we should take a look at the smaller, but just as sweeping to its respective format, the Dual Links ban list. Take it away, Jason. What's going on, Duel fans? It's Ty Wolf, your friendly neighborhood super beast, and welcome to the Duel Links Corner. July turned out to be a very important month in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And with Duel Links, it was no exception. With the release of a new main set, four events, they swapped cards around on the Limit Limited list, and they adjusted three different character skill sets. And I tell you right now, they put in some work right here. Let's jump right into things with the release of the new main sex Cybernetic Rebellion, whose MVP has got to be Cyber Dragon, a monster who helped change the pace of the game when it was first released in the TCG. So you can expect him to be making a splash in many different decks and strategies. Speaking of making a splash, Cybernetic Rebellion has an utter downpour of water support, making all you waterlogged motherfuckers moist. All you deep sea players now have the options running Chris Johns, Frogs, Nimbles, and you even got new Mermail support. Let's not overlook the release of Deep Sea Diva, which much like Cyber Dragon, helped to define the metagame when it was released. Now let's talk about the ban list adjustment. Granted, we didn't have 30 card switch places like they did in the regular game, but I think they did pretty good on this one. The only card joining the Limit 1 list is Gem Knight Lady Lapis Lazuli. Her addition here is to stop FDKs from running rampant. Our first new entry on the Limit 2 list is Diamond Core of Kokimaru. Diamond's ability to search any Kokimaru card gave the deck too much advantage and made duels very one-sided. Next is Amazon the Swordswoman, who was only thrown on the lift because Konami was sick and tired of seeing that deck every day. Like, God! But to make sure that your Kokimaru plays aren't too salty, being released from the list in total is the Iron Core of Kokimaru. One can easily assume because they switched the status of Diamond, this was safer to come off. With this list, 
comes a readjustment of character skills. Beginning with Loomis and Umbra's mass tribute, the adjustment makes it so that when you use this skill, you cannot normal or special summon any other monsters except for Mass Beast Desgardus until the end of your opponent's next turn. Many players was using this effect originally, so they would have a monster for tribute. What, you Ace players like, oh, you took away our Cyber Dragons. I'm gonna sack this, this sh before Normstar. <laughs> you can't play me. Next, we look at Weevil Underwood skill, Parasite Infestation. Now, you can only activate this effect when your deck contains four or more insect type monsters with different names, ensuring that you stay true to Weevil's creepy crawly style of gameplay. Last is Sartoria's brand new skills, Three Lords Pillar. Ay, 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 ay. Now, if your deck contains the Spiritual Lord, the Sky Lord, you will begin the duel with the Material Lord set in your Spell and Trap card zone. Originally, players was using this skill in order to stack their deck by keeping the copies of the Three Pillars at the very bottom. On a more personal note, it really warms my heart to see that Konami is making changes to the game not solely for profit, but for the betterment of the game as a whole. I wish that level of attention and transparency was placed in all aspects of Duel Monsters. With that being said, once again it's your boy Tywolf, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you Jason for making that all very black and white. I see I'm going to end up having to hurt you. Uh, anyway, moving on. We welcome back our waifu expert Marion to review the new alternate art for the Ghost Gale hand traps. Marion? Aw, uh, hell no. I am not going to end up on some kind of list just because I said something about Ash's feet. Nuh-uh, I'm out of here. Uh, oh. Um. We gotta fill time somehow. Oh, introducing our brand new feline correspondent, my cat, Marty, with Marty's perfect tech cards. M Marty? Hey, 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 hey Marty. Do, do, do something cute. No? Okay. Uh, it's, it, it's this one. Thank you, Marty, for being such a fuzzy boy. And we finally move on to tonight's final story, the TCG ban list. We'll be looking at this story in two parts. First up, we'll be looking at the list and analysis of what its changes will do to the format. And then secondly, what those changes and the new sets have to do with the secondary market. Our first ban list expert and definite goblin, Ryan Ost. Welcome to the studio, Ryan. First of all, not a goblin. Second of all, I can't believe you had the balls to ask me to dress in a loincloth and fake nose and do this news segment as a goblin. <laughs> that's, that's fake news. <laughs> fake news? You want to talk about fake? This whole thing we're doing? This talking back and forth? Now that's fake. We're not even doing this live. If this thing wasn't really live and all post-editing, could I do this? Run, 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 run. Yes! Exactly! That's the kind of thing you can do in post. <sighs> Whatever. Start your segment so I can pretend like I'm listening. Thank you, Dave, for your undivided attention while I talk about this very important thing of the ban list. First of all, there are two banned cards on this list. The first one being Eclipse Wyvern and the second being Phantom Knight Bardiche. Uh, it looks like the... I think the Eclipse Wyvern was a casualty of another card coming off the list later on, uh, Dragon Roller Tempest. Uh, Phantom Knight Bardiche definitely was being used in Orcus a lot and being able to set up multiple negates on top of the already crazy pluses that you get with just a couple cards definitely was uh, definitely needed to be a hit. Uh, it's too bad that that and the uh, the rank up magic card are the ones to be hit, uh, so sorry Phantom Knight players. Moving on to Limited, uh, the first one is Multifaker. So on the list, all of the big four, the uh, your Salmon Greats, your Thunder Dragons, your Orcist, and uh, Sky Strikers all got a slight hit. So uh, Multifaker, 
Multifigure wasn't def as it wasn't doing anything, but with all the big four being taken down a notch, that was kind of a, a calculated uh, the hit, so as not to allow the Ultra guys to kind of take the void and, and do very well. Uh, Collapse of mm-hmm. first are kind of a continuation sure. of the Dragon Ruler, bringing that back. Uh, seeing a lot of Guard Dragon, Thunder Dragon plays, kind of hit that. Um, a Gazelle. And Circle Salmon Greats got a little bit of a hit. They lost four cards with the Gazelle and uh, Circle hit. Basically, if you don't have your sign up mining, you're not playing the deck. I don't think that that will completely destroy the deck, however. I think it's going to hurt the mid to late game consistency, the recoverability. Uh, they're still going to, with sign up mining and your buffer low, you're still going to be able to make your plays. Uh, but if. If you get called by the graves on the on the uh, gazelle, you're gonna be uh, kind of in a hard hard way. And like I mentioned, Tempest is at one. Not gonna wreck the format. Uh, I don't know that it's gonna really do much. Uh, hopefully in the future. I know we're kind of in the off season. Hopefully we'll see some play in in the future YCSs. Uh, I think it'll be cool to see that pop up. Uh, Digusto Emerald is finally back to one, which is awesome. Love that card. Uh, great extender. Now that the zoo issue is gone, I think that that can definitely come back. Uh, multi roll uh, is another one of the big four, so that uh, it, again it doesn't it doesn't slaughter the deck going first, uh, but it does kind of really hurt if they do get Cosmic Cyclone. Uh, Terraforming and Metaverse are on the list now. Thank you, Mystic Mine, and uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Uh, Light Stage mm-hmm. also got hit, so the Sky Striker Trick Star is really it's crippled cold. there. Moving on to semi limits, we got Chaos Emperor Dragon. Um, yeah, not much to say about that one. The errata made it fine. Uh, we got the Danger, Nessie, Jackalope, and Sukshinoko. Danger Snack. Uh, to two now. So you got your uh, your upstart goblins are a little less consistent. So I think people will just start playing Mothman. I don't think that's going to really hurt a ton. Uh, Ether, the Monarch, is back to two. Very cool. Uh, looking at you, Lithium, and your Monarchs. Stratos. About time. Insector Dragonfly. About time. Damage Juggler. About oh, time. Sure it. Bell event. Yeah, about time. Royal yeah. Tribute. Gravekeepers in 2019. Hmm. This will be interesting. Don't know what it's gonna do. And on to the unlimits. Uh, basically, the forbidden unlimited list cleanup. We got Cleefort Scout. Pay eight. Pay eight. Pay eight. Pay eight. Pay eight. Pay eight. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, Luster Pendulum. Honestly, no one's going to be playing him at more than one anyway, so getting him off the list is fine. Uh, he's not going to be, I don't think he's going to be played at, at uh, multiples uh, in any Pendulum deck. Maybe you'll see him in Counter, counter Fairies uh, with the Judgment at three. Also, I think that could be definitely a, uh, a solid deck. Uh, looking at you, uh, Will. Hope to see a deck profile from you soon. Uh, Trishula, about time. Dark Hole. I mean, really, who's going to be playing Dark Hole? Monster Gate's also back. I mean, maybe Infernoids. That could be cool. Rekindling. I don't think there's really any crazy fire decks at the moment. Maybe we'll see some uh, some support in the Fire Fist a booster box coming up. Okay. They're getting a little bit more support, so that could be cool. Might be used to uh, promote that. Uh, and then to touch base on that Solemn Judgment again, I wa- I'm curious to see if it's going to do anything outside of something like Counter Fairies. Um, because we now mm-hmm. have Red Reboot mm-hmm. and everyone well. has access to three Solemn Judgments. It will be very, very interesting interesting to see some Solemn Judgment Wars again. Activate Solemn Judgment, uh, Response, Solemn Judgment, Solemn Judgment, Red Reboot. But yeah, that's uh, that's about it. Um, I am going to go back to reality. So Dave, you enjoy this elaborate framing device used solely to flex on other Yugi tubers. Uh, thank you, Ryan, for that meta-analysis, both with respect to Yu-Gi-Oh! and literally. Finishing up this story tonight, we move on to the second and final part with what the ban list and the two new sets to the main TCG have done to the Yu-Gi-Oh! secondary market. Our special guest tonight with his degree in Yu-Gi-Nomics is John Moore. Good evening, John. What's good news, Tube? And welcome to Dave's channel. Thanks for having me. Thank you for plugging this video once it goes live. Don't push your luck there, Mr. Top 10 Top 10s. <laughs> All uh, right. So, what are this? What are some of the current trends on the secondary market, John? 
Thanks for asking. So, first up, Opelosa is huge out of Rising Rampage at around $55. I don't know how some pack opener got too excited and damaged one taking it out of the packs, but that's around the cost of, I would say close to 34 Taco Bell burritos. Moving on, we look at the Prismatic Secret Rare, and that's just a whole month of Taco Bell burritos, so I would go ahead and give a hard pass on that unless you are packing it out of Rising Rampage yourself. Get Out is highly underestimated at around just 10 Taco Bell burritos, so I would say this is pretty good value to skip out on that for. And then we look at the Danger Engine, and again, we add up to about a whole month of Taco Taco Bell burritos if you're getting everything, but if you wait just a moment and look at the Megatons coming out, your Taco Bell burritos are much better spent over here since August 29th, you have a chance at all the Danger Cards and much more within the Megatons. Similarly, the Sky Strikers may be or may not be in the Megatons since they were just in Battles of Legend. We do know that Dark Saviors is in the Tens, but we don't know what kind of cards are going to come out of Dark Saviors. Maybe it's the Woos. Maybe it's the Vampires. I'm getting Twilight feels. Anyways, back to you, Dave. Thank you, John, for your forever wise input. I'm now pretty hungry. And thank you all at home for stopping by and sharing your evening here with the folks at Yugi News. Make sure you join us next month for the August edition. And remember guys, if you don't troll the meta, who will? I'll see you guys next time. Remember to subscribe so that you don't miss any of my totally rad dueling. Watching more of these videos is almost as fine as Taya's ass? What? I'm not saying that. Fine. Then it's time to duel!